have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Job chapter 19. If not, they'll put it on the screen. Job chapter 19. We're going to just read one verse here. Job 19 verse 25, it says, For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. Here in this verb, in this verse, Job, in the midst of his intense suffering and loss, he boldly declares his confidence in his Redeemer. Job's statement stands as a powerful testimony of faith, even in the darkest of times. In the midst of his pain, in the midst of his trials, in the midst of all that was going on around him, Job was able to stand and declare, I know that my Redeemer lives. That statement, you know, here we are all these thousands of years later and we're still pulling on that verse, on Job's declaration. The title of my message this morning is, My Redeemer Lives. And I want to look at the word redeem, the Hebrew definition. It comes from the Hebrew word gawal, and it's a primitive root word meaning to redeem. Specifically, in according to the law of kinship, to be the next of kin, and such to buy back a relative's property, marry his widow, pay his debt, or even avenge his loss. In the law of kinship, there was somebody in the family that was known as the Gawal. And they were the one, they were like big brother. They were like Uncle Yoshi. Come on, somebody. huh? And every family had that person. They would say they would assume the responsibility of, of Gawal in the family's life. And if somebody got into trouble, if somebody fell into debt, if they came and tried to repossess somebody's property or things, then, then the Redeemer would step up. He says, I'm going to cover that debt. I'm going to avenge that loss. I'm going to step in and be the Gawal and be the Redeemer. The Redeemer would avenge. The Redeemer would pay. The Redeemer would deliver, purchase, or even uh, to bring revenge. A redeemer is someone entrusted with securing one's release from oppression, harm, evil, enslavement, or some other binding obligation. A redeemer restores the lost rights and freedoms of another by avenging any wrongs and paying whatever price is required to set that person free. You know, in California, we have a, a recycling program. And on our cans and bottles, you see those little letters, CRV. How many of you ever seen that before? Some of you are professional recyclers. Come on, somebody. And everybody knows when they go to your house, don't throw the cans away. Right? They are recycles. Amen. The recycling program, it's called the CRV. It stands for California Redemption Value. It's where the state asks you to pay the CRV up front, knowing that you can turn in your used empty cans and bottles and you could get some money for it. They say, we want those cans and bottles to come back. We have use for them. We know that there's value in them and we're willing to pay you to redeem those cans and those bottles. You know, when I was a kid, you know, I used to uh, collect G.I. Joe's. Well, who am I lying? I collect them still today, right? And, and there was the, there were the G.I. Joes, they would come in a package, and on the back, the G.I. Joe, one of the cool things about G.I. Joe is the artwork. I think we have one of the file cards right here. Yeah. Oh, man, that takes me back. Come on. You guys don't know what's up. You guys are missing out. Now, this is the backside of the package. 
This would show you all the other guys in the line and the, and the different guys you could get. And then the figure that you brought, this would be his file card. It had his code name, all kinds of things about him. But on every package of the G.I. Joes that you would buy, there was this thing right here called the flag point. And then we have the image for that. Those flag points, when you purchase a figure, you get the flag point. And when you collect the flag points, you're able to turn them in and redeem them for a prize. And I remember in the 80s when I was a kid, I saved up all my flag points to, to get this guy right here. Super Trooper. And guess what, guys? Here he is, baby. Super Trooper is in the house. Now, just take a good look at that right there for a second. Huh? Look at my man right here. Huh? Suited and booted, baby. Huh? Chromed up from the dome up. Come on, somebody, right? So look at this, man. This guy was so cool. And this was a mail-away order. You couldn't go to the store to get this. You had to save up all your flag points. Oh, man, I'll never forget. It took so long to come in the mail. Every week. I was like, you ever seen the Christmas story? That's how I was. I was like that kid. And I was like waiting for my guy to come in the mail. I said, man, I saved up all those points. I did all that work. Huh? I waited all that time to get this guy in the mail because to me, he was worth it. Come on, give Super Trooper a good hand. I'm going to put him in good hands right here. Come on, get this guy. Don't break him, man. Come on. That thing's older than you are. So when I was a kid, I would save these flag points so that I was able to save them up and redeem them for a, for a prize. And I got Super Trooper as my prize. The role of Redeemer is uniquely assigned to Jesus, who rescues believers from the dominion of darkness. I think something lost on, on many people today is the fact that we, without Jesus, we're lost cause. Without Jesus, there's going to be a price to pay. And though many, the Bible says in the last days, they'll be marrying and drinking and having a good time, totally oblivious to the judgment that's coming. So what Jesus did, he came to pay the price and to redeem us from the dominion of darkness. He came to stand in the gap and deliver us into the kingdom of God. Jesus is what sets our value or he resets our value. He gives his own life on the cross for all who repent of their sins and trust in him. He is our redeemer. He has valued us. And though we have thrown our lives away by not trusting in our heavenly father, by not obeying him, by not fearing him, he actually came and he gave his own life in our place. He lived a life of trust. He died a death that he didn't have to die, but he did it because of his love for us. He gave himself for us so that he could, as the Bible says, be our redeemer, the one who rescues us. Isaiah 44, 22 says, I have swept away your offenses like a cloud, your sins like the morning mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Matthew 121 says she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. <laughs> Psalm 78 35 they are remembered that God was their rock and the most high God their redeemer and I love Jesus's mission statement in Luke 4 18 the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed I'm here to tell you this morning that Jesus is your redeemer and Jesus has a value on us us amen and just the way the state of california says man all those cans and bottles we want them and we're willing to pay a price for them 
Anybody that ever wanted a, a super trooper, they had to save up the flag points and they had to do the effort and pay the price to get that figure because it meant something to them. Come on, somebody. I got that figure today because that thing meant something to me. And I want you to know today that you are worth far more than a toy to Jesus. That when God loved you so much, he said, I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to even give my only son. As a what? The Bible says as a ransom. He came in as the goal. Come on, somebody. He says, no, I'm going to buy them back. I'm going to buy them back. I'm going to pay the price that they couldn't pay. I'm going to redeem them as a people. I'm going to step in and pay. The image of redemption in the Old Testament is one of God rescuing his people from Egypt, pulling them out of bondage, out of literal slavery. In the New Testament, Jesus, the Redeemer, he rescues us from our natural state of being in bondage to sin, of serving ourselves in destructive ways. But God in his great love sent his only begotten son who lived a perfect life, died on the cross and then rose from the dead in order to bring us to him, to redeem us. That's what we mean when we say that Jesus is our redeemer. He is our redeemer. And I want to bring your attention to three things as we look back at this verse in Job 19.25. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. I want to look at a few things. The first thing I want to look at is the certainty of our Redeemer. The certainty of our Redeemer. Job said, for I know that my Redeemer lives. Job's declaration is rooted in certainty. For him to get up and say, I know that my Redeemer lives, that statement is rooted in in certainty, despite his circumstance, Job didn't say, I hope my Redeemer lives. I think my Redeemer lives. No, he said, I know my Redeemer lives. There was a faith and a confidence and a certainty that Jesus, that God Almighty, was his Redeemer. I wonder if we are able to say that with some confidence this morning. I wonder how many of us could, even in the midst of our trials, even in the midst of our process. Hello, somebody. You know what happens, too? I think a lot of times for when, we're, when we're new in the Lord and we're kind of, you know what we call in the church, baby Christians. Any baby Christians in the house? Yeah, the fact that you didn't wave, that shows you a baby. Come on, somebody. Right? If you've been saved, I would say five years or less. You a baby Christian. <laughs> and what happens is, you know, when people are young in the Lord, they're new to the things of God, they, 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 they get so fixed on the promise that they forget about the process. And it's good. Keep your eyes on the prize. Be motivated and fueled by the promises of God. But that doesn't mean that there is not the processes of God. The promise of God, it doesn't negate the process of God. As a matter of fact, it guarantees it. If you have a promise from God, you will go through the process of God. Can I hear someone say amen? amen. And in the midst sometimes of our process, in the midst of, the, of, of the, the forming of a man of God, the forming of a woman of God, the forming of a leader, are there any people here today that say, I have a promise from God? If you got a promise from God, there's going to be times of testing. There's going to be valleys on the way to the mountaintop. There's going to be difficult times. But we got to have the certainty of Job to say it doesn't matter what I'm going through. I know that my Redeemer lives. Come on, give the Lord a good hand. <laughs> Problems have a way of causing us to question, where's God? Where's God, you know? It's like I remember going to the beach when I was a kid, and I used to love to fight the waves. I'd be out there for hours, you know, get up. I'd, be, I'd get up full of seaweed, <laughs> chewing on sand crabs. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's how I felt. I felt like super trooper in the waves. And I would, for some reason, I would just like to, like, I would, get, I would, I would go right up, heads up with the waves, you know? I was like, they're not going to take me. And I would be like... 
I'll just be doing that for hours, you know, fighting the waves and, and just feeling strong like the waves couldn't take me out, you know. But then there's always that one wave. Hallelujah, right? And I remember this one wave beat me up, boy. Knocked me off my feet, took me underwater, right? Pulled my pants down, sent me up. The... There I was all humble on the, on the, on the shore. Man, this took me underwater. It shaved my nipple off the sex. Oh, I was like, <laughs> yeah. You ever been humbled by the circumstances of life? Come on, somebody. You ever been through some things? You ever been knocked off your feet? You ever been through, well, let me tell you something. Job, he went through some problems too. And if you've ever read about the story of Job, you say, there's somebody that could question where's God. There's somebody that could have got discouraged. But in the midst of all that, he said, man, I will not second guess God's role in my life. I know that my Redeemer lives. Even Job's wife tried to get him to throw in the towel. He said, my God, you're still believing in God? Just curse your God and die already. Imagine. Man, make sure you get the right wife, brothers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not everything that glitters is gold. Amen. Job's wife, when he needed her the most, huh? she had no faith. Amen. Job speaks of the certainty of our Redeemer, for I know that my Redeemer lives. This certainty speaks to the unshakable foundation of Job's faith in his Redeemer. In our lives, we face trials, uncertainties, but like Job, we could have confidence in the living Redeemer. This certainty is not, it certainly is not based on our feelings or circumstances, but on the truth of who God is. The question we should ask ourselves is, do we hold this same certainty in our hearts when we're facing trials and struggles and tribulations? That's when it's, that's when it's needed the most, is it when you're going through it. And you know, what, you know why that's so important in Victory Hour to us, Covina? Because God is raising up giant killers. Ah, oh, you don't believe that. Let me tell this side over here. I said God is raising up giant killers. God is raising up city takers and world shakers. Let me tell you something from our midst. God is going to raise up pastors and missionaries and evangelists and home directors. God is going to raise up world shakers in this place. And because the promise is big, the process will be big. I took comfort in that about a month ago. God encouraged me. He said, don't worry. I got leaders in the making. There's people going through the process right now. That's why when I get to church and you're all discouraged and weird, I just say, amen, and praise the Lord. They say, pastor, so-and-so is going through it. I say, amen, praise the Lord. Amen. Right? Because there's no shortcuts to the promises of God. And so God comforted me with the fact that, don't worry, I have people right now, they're learning how to kill their lions and their bears. I got them in the backside of the mountain. I got them over there in the sheepfold. And I gave them a promise that one day they're going to be kings and leaders and giant killers. But before there'll be any killing of giants, they'll be tending of sheep. So at first I got encouraged, but then I, got, I was like, oh, but before they kill the giants, they're going to tend to the sheep. But it's in tending the, tending the sheep where faith is developed, where character grows, where your gifts are identified. And most importantly, it's where you learn who God is. You know God deeper in the valley than you ever will on the mountaintop. That's why with certainty, Job was able to get up and, and declare, for I know that my Redeemer lives. Amen. Give the Lord a good hand of praise for that. <laughs> the certainty of our Redeemer and secondly, the role of our Redeemer. 
My Redeemer lives. The term Redeemer, we talked about it a little bit already. In the context of the Old Testament, it refers to someone who rescues or buys back something that has been lost or is in danger. In Job's situation, he's looking forward to the ultimate redemption that only God could provide. Jesus, our Redeemer, fulfills this role perfectly. He has redeemed us from sin, death, and the power of the enemy. His resurrection is the ultimate proof that our Redeemer is alive and active in our lives today. You know what I pray? I pray that every single one of us would know the role of our Redeemer. That it, would ne- it wouldn't be just coming to church. Coming to church is great. Come on, somebody, right? We got smiley faces outside. Smiling faces. Huh? We got smiling faces. We got people serving in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the security ministry. How many thank God for our security ministry? Those are the real MVPs right there, security. We got people serving as ushers, people serving in the children's ministry. You get to come and bring your kids. Hallelujah. You saw Carlos and Samantha in that video? They're going to do a mega water day. Right? So while we're over there, a mega Sunday with Pastor Sonny and yay, right? There's going to be a team of people watching the kids right here. How many thank God for that? So coming to church is great. You bring your kids, you come to the house of the Lord, you hear that we have a good worship ministry, right? You know Pastor Ezra's going to get up there and hey, ah, whoa, hey. Throw a few jokes in there, throw some scriptures in there. You walk out high-fiving. Mm, mm. Ring my bell, ring my bell, Jesus. Trying to make every song Christian. Jesus knows how to ring my bell. Coming to church is great. But it's not just in church where you get to know your Redeemer. It's on Monday where you get to know him. It's on Tuesday where you get to know him. It's when you're going through it that you get to know him. I'm telling you, you got a Redeemer in your life. That is able to take his, but he lives. He's not the redeemer only of yesterday. He's not the redeemer of tomorrow. He is the redeemer of today. Hallelujah. Man, you got a redeemer. He's alive and well. And lastly, and the worship team can come. It's the certainty of our redeemer, the role of our redeemer, and the future hope of our redeemer. That verse in Job closed out with, and he shall stand at last on the earth. And he shall stand at last on the earth. Job's declaration is not only about present reality, but also future hope. He speaks of a time when his redeemer will stand on the earth, pointing to the ultimate victory and restoration that is to come. This future hope sustains us through life's trials. As we look forward to the day when Christ will return. As we look forward to the day. You ever see the news or go through things and you just kind of lose hope a little bit for you? You're like, oh, Lord, just come. Just come, Lord, just come. Jesus, come. One day the sky's going to crack, the trumpet's going to sound. Jesus will come back for his people. That's the blessed hope. The Apostle Paul explains that our complete redemption will be experienced in the future. Right now we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory. As we wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children. Including the new bodies that he's promised us in Romans. We will enjoy every glorious aspect of our spiritual inheritance that God has promised to his people. Titus 2 verse 11 says, For the grace of God that has appeared to all people offers salvation. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-confident, upright, and godly lives in this present age, looking for that blessed hope and that glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager 
to do what is good. That's one of my favorite passages of scripture right there. Titus chapter 2 verses 11 through 14. As we wait, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing. The blessed hope and the glorious appearing. He's not only our redeemer for today. He's our redeemer for the future. How many know that with this life is it's going to come to an end? How, how many of you are over, over 45? Wave at me. You're 45 and over. Oh, Lord, help them, Lord. Strengthen their joints, oh, God. <laughs> you know, we always heard when we were younger, oh, life goes by fast. It, it seems like yesterday, right? <laughs> But it really does. You know, it really does. Seems like yesterday. But we were on the crusade in Boston. And I was like, I remember being that young soldier right there in the streets. And I was like, man, now I'm like a pastor on the crusade. And driving by in the car, waving at the crusaders. Good job, guys. We'll see you on the end when you're done. Bring all the empty flyers with you. Amen. <laughs> oh, I was like, wow. What, you know, this is a you know, crazy it's just, you know, I've been, I'm at that age now where I'm having all those moments, you know, and it um, goes by like that. This life, the Bible describes it as, uh, as, as fleeting. Huh? It says it's like the grass, the flowers in the field, that one day they're blooming and at peak beauty and the next, right? This is just temporary. We're just passing through. We got the hope of heaven. Come on, somebody. We got the hope of heaven. Some of us don't get excited about heaven because we think we're going to get there on our own merit. Listen, you have nothing to do with your entrance into heaven. It is by the grace of God. Come on, you have been bought at a price. You got the goal out. Come on, somebody. He stepped in. He said, no, I'm going to pay for them. I'm going to redeem them. I'm going to cover them. I'm going to wake away for them. Where the enemy tried to rob them, I'm going to say no, and I'm going to avenge them. We got a redeemer. Stand with me this morning. Praise God for that. Growing up, that was hard for me to understand. I didn't have any brothers or uncles. I didn't have a father in the house. I, I couldn't fully comprehend what, what was taking place. But when I came to know God, I found out that I got a father. I got a redeemer. I got a protector. I Come on, somebody. I have a redeemer in my life. You have a redeemer in your life, and we have the hope of heaven. Your redemption, like your salvation, has three phases. Been, being, and will be. You've been redeemed. You're being redeemed, and you will be redeemed. Those of you that lifted your hand or you feel led to say this prayer, say this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, I call on you. Please forgive me of all my sins. I confess that I fall short. Wash me in the blood. Wash my mind and my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I put my trust in you for salvation. I know that my Redeemer lives. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for these that are responding to you. I thank you, Lord, for how your word comes into our hearts and, and sheds light on situations. You're able to renew and refresh and remind. And I thank you, Lord, that that's what you're doing in the lives of your people. We give you glory for how you're moving. And we give you glory for what you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, somebody give the Lord a hand of praise. Well, thanks for joining us here at Victory Outreach West Covina. We hope you enjoyed your time. Also, I want to encourage you to subscribe and click the notification bell. That way you get notified every time we go live. You won't miss a service. Stay connected with us. And you can also partner with us in your giving if you want to bless the ministry financially so we can continue the work that God is doing here. You can do that at any time. I hope you share it. And I hope you come visit us live real soon. God bless you.